everybody. So it is my favorite time of year. It's springtime, which means that we're outside and we're doing a lot of things in the yard, weeding and planting and um, getting everything spruced up and ready for summer. And of course, we have to open our pool, which would be exciting, but it's really quite gross now. And as I was outside and I was cleaning up and doing yard work, a story the Bible came to mind about a young man who was also working outside. He was busy using an axe to chop down trees. I don't have an axe. I usually call somebody who likes to chop down trees and have them take care of that. But he was outside, you know, chopping away. And he had an accident um, by a body of water. And um, a miracle happened in that story. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but I can tell you right now that if I were to drop my trimmers here into this lucky pool right now, they would sink to the bottom of that pool and I'd have to go in there to go get them. And I am not getting in that pool until this pool is clean. So in the meantime, let's go on inside and I'll tell you the story about our young man. Go. Yeah. So I thought that instead of reading an actual storybook for you guys today, I'd actually read you out of the Bible, which is the best story book of them all because it is a true account of all that God has done for us. And I thought I would read to you from 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're not going to read the whole bit. I'm only going to read you a couple of verses. And then I'll summarize the story for you. So this is how it goes. 2 Kings chapter 6. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan River and each of us get there a log. And let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I'll go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down those trees. But as one was felling the log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick, and he threw it in the water, and it made the iron axe head float. And he said, Take it up. And the man reached out his hand, and he took it. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is an amazing story. I mean, can you just picture it? These guys are all busy chopping down trees. They want to build a bigger house. These were men that worked with the prophet Elisha, and they needed a better place to live. So they were busy chopping down all these trees so they could build it. They had their axe, whack, 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 whack. And then suddenly, the axe head, boing, and do, 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 into the air, and poosh into the bottom of the Jordan River. Now, I've never actually been to Israel and seen the Jordan River, but from what I've been told that there are places where it runs really fast and really deep, and it's really hard to get things out. And if I had borrowed somebody's tool and I broke it or lost it, I would be devastated. And this, this man obviously felt that way. And he cried out to Elisha, what am I gonna do? Can you help me? And Elisha was more than happy to oblige. And he went and he found a dead stick. This thing is not going to grow. It is not coming back to life. It is as dead as a doornail. And he chucked that stick right into the spot where the axe head went. And boop, 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 boop. the axe head arose. It floated to the surface. Now how miraculous is that? I know that metal does not float, not even in the best of circumstances. This was a miracle that God acted for that man. And we see how God cares for us in every aspect of our lives. So, you know, if, if things are hard at school, you're not alone because God is there with you. Or if you're having a hard time with a friend at the playground, God is with you there and he sees and he cares and he will work in your life just as he worked in the life of this young worker. And I thought maybe today, instead of doing a craft, we could do a science experiment to show how this kind of stuff does play out in our world today. Now, we traditionally call this stuff STEM for science, technology, engineering, and math. And it is kind of fun to see how things in our world work the way that God intended them to. Most things, you know, when they're placed in a liquid, will sink. So I presented a whole bunch of different items of liquids of things that float. Here we have some colored water. We have some dish soap. We have some rubbing alcohol. We have some um, vegetable oil. And we have pancake syrup. Usually we don't float things in pancake syrup. Usually we drown our pancakes in pancake syrup. But we have all kinds of things, um, liquids, that we could float or sink things in. Now in the summer, in that pool of mine, I like to float. But I don't float perfectly on top of the water. 
And I don't know if the variety of things that I've chosen here will float perfectly on the water either. We have a cork. We have a large eraser. We have a little eraser from a pencil. We have a birthday candle. We have a marble. We have a paper clip. We have a screw. We have a button. We have a penny. And I even have some itty bitty teeny tiny M&Ms. Mm -mm. Now, I can tell you right now that if I put this stuff in the water, I think the only thing that might float would be the cork. I think everything else would sink like a stone in the water. And just to prove it, we'll take an M&M here and we'll plop it over here. Yeah, that went right to the bottom of my dish. Even my penny is not going to float in the water, just like our axe head is gonna go all the way down to the ground. So those things do not float. So what I did is I took all those liquids and I put them in a tall glass. I put in the pancake syrup first. You can also use molasses if you wanna do this at home. And then we added the blue layer, which is the dish soap. And then we added the green water. You can use whatever color you want for the water, if you want red or whatever, purple or whatever. And then we added some vegetable oil. And last on top, that very clear layer is the rubbing alcohol. And um, as you get a little bit older, we'll talk about density. And dense, these items will not, you could shake this mixture together and then walk away from it for an hour. And all these layers would separate again because the pancake syrup is the most dense and the rubbing alcohol is the least dense. And that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now, but think of it as thickness. So let's go ahead and see what floats. Let's start with our penny. Since we saw that in the water, the penny sunk all the way to the bottom. So let's see what happens to the penny here. We're gonna put that in and it went all the way down to the bottom. I heard it hit the bottom as it hit the bottom. So it's at the bottom. Let's try something else. Shall we try? Let's try the marble. The marble in the water, he sinks to the bottom too. So I'm gonna guess that he's gonna go all the way to the bottom too. He's kinda of heavy. Oh yeah, he's, I don't think he went to the pancake syrup though. I think he's stuck in the dish soap because I can sort of see him floating right in that layer. It's kinda of hard to see with the camera, but I can see him glinting off the light floating there. So he didn't even go all the way down to the pancake syrup. Let's try something else. Let's try the screw. Let's see where the screw goes. In the water, he sinks to the bottom too. So let's see what happens to him. Where is he at? He didn't go all the way down, I didn't hear him. Yep, he's in the blue too. And you know what, I was wrong. The marble did go all the way down. The marble is sitting on the bottom here, just longer to go. But the screw is definitely in the blue, I can see it. Let's try our big eraser. Our big eraser, he sinks in the, in the water too. So let's see what happens to him. Oop, he bounced and jumped up. Did you see that? He, I think, is also, nope, he went all the way to the bottom. If you look, he's down here, right next to the penny and the marble. All right, let's try the candle. Look at that. The candle is floating on the oil. Can you see that? It is right below the surface of the rubbing alcohol and it's floating on top of the oil. Let's see where our button goes. The button has made its way all the way down to the dish soap. It is right here now. I can see it. It seems to be tilting a little bit. It might go all the way down. I don't know, it seems to be stuck between those two layers. I think it's trying to decide what it wants to do. We also have our paper clip. Let's see where he goes. He is going all the way down too, I think. You think he's in the bottom now? Nope, actually, if you look, he's also stuck in the dish soap. He's right there. All right, what about an M&M? We'll try a yellow M&M. We'll see where he goes. And I think he, He's kind of hard to see, but I think he's also down there on the bottom. I wonder if we'll find anything that'll say in the next layer down. Here's our lily racer. He went slow. Yep, he's stuck in the dish soap too. He's right there. And last but not least is my cork. Let's see where the cork goes. 
the cork floats right on top. So we have almost something in every layer. We have the cork in the rubbing alcohol, the candle in the oil. I don't think we have anything in the water. We have a couple things in the dish soap and everything else went all the way to the bottom of the pancake syrup. So that was kind of an interesting experiment. Now I can guarantee you that um, like with our screw and everything, the metal will always go to the bottom. And if I throw a piece of wood in here, it is not gonna float back up to the top. That only happens when God intervenes and has a supernatural miracle. So I hope you enjoyed our story today about Elisha and the young worker with his ax head. It's one of my favorite miracles in the Bible, and there is a bunch of miracles in the Bible. You can spend some time today maybe flipping through your Bible and finding some of your favorite ones yourself. And we'll see you guys again next week. We hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.